Diamond Painting friends, Jessica here with Tiny Worlds of Wonder, stopping in today to share a super juicy video on copyright. Now, I know that does not sound like the most thrilling topic one could create a video on, but I promise I'm gonna do my best to make today's video both informative and enjoyable. So please stick around. <laughs> now, you guys know that I am passionate about this topic. A, I have a daughter who is about to go to college to study art herself. I have also encountered a lot of artists who've had their work stolen and sold on AliExpress as diamond paintings or embroidery kits. This is really a rampant, rampant problem. And really the precipitating incident for this was something that happened last week. So I was super excited to help a company sign an artist who had already been struggling with her work being stolen and sold on Ali. The company signed her, the canvas is released, and boom, within three days, that work was already on AliExpress and people were already buying it. And then I went to Instagram and I saw dozens of pictures of unlicensed images that people were posting. And then boom, I went to YouTube and I saw a half a dozen videos the same day showing unlicensed images on people's YouTube channels. And I'm not gonna lie, I just about lost it. So I filmed an epic rant-a-thon, but then I sat on it for a couple of days. And I thought, you know, I really respect my viewers. I really think highly of them. I really respect my fellow creators and think highly of them. And I think it's pretty likely that people are not doing this intentionally. It's happening because A, this is so rampant and B, it's so hard to riddle out. So I decided the best course of action might be just to be one of many voices out there, raising awareness about this and giving people tools so that if you are a person who's really concerned about buying licensed canvases, you actually have some action steps you can take that are really easy to understand. So today's video is really gonna be sort of like an FAQ. I am approaching this as a diamond painter, but this topic is really relevant to all areas of the crafting industry. So paper crafting, doll making, paint by number, cross stitch, embroidery, and, and millions of other things, okay? I'm gonna put some timestamps in the description so that you can access these topics easily and come back and reference them later if you want to. But I really do encourage you to watch the whole video through just because I think these ideas build on each other. Now, quick disclaimer up front, I am not a lawyer. I have consulted a copyright attorney on these issues, but I am not one myself. So if you have specific questions, it's always best to consult a copyright attorney and definitely don't base any actions that you're gonna take in your own life only on the information that I give you here, okay? Today's working canvas is this beautiful piece by Frederick Layton called Flaming June. This is from Distracted by Diamonds. This is actually the first kit I ever bought from Distracted by Diamonds. It is so beautiful and I am just in love with it. This of course looks pretty confettied up close, but from viewing distance that confetti just blends and it is gorgeous. Of course, I'll give you more information on this canvas when I do my final wrap up review. I am really close now, you guys, to being done with this. So I'm all the way down in the bottom section here. Our final review of this one will be coming shortly. I'm gonna go through kind of some basics here, but then I'm gonna break down some really easy steps for you, like I said. So this is gonna get a little complex up front, but bear with me. So first off, what is copyright? Copyright is exactly what it sounds like, okay? Copyright is the right for an artist to copy their own work in its most essential form. So copyright really provides an artist the sole right to profit off of their work for a set period of time, all right? And encompassed in those rights are six basic tenets, okay? The first is that the artist has the right to reproduce their work. Second, the artist has the right to create derivative works. That just means creating that piece of art in a new form or medium. Three, they have the right to distribute the work. 
Fourth, they have the right to perform the work if the work is a piece of performing art. Fifth, they have the right to display the work publicly. That includes on social media like YouTube or Instagram or Facebook. And sixth, they have the right to transmit that piece of art in the case of musical works. Artists don't have to do anything for those rights to attach to their work now in the United States. So every piece of work an artist creates is automatically under copyright the moment it is created. Now in the US, copyright term has varied a whole lot over the years, but I found a really excellent article that breaks it down really well from Stanford University Library, and I'll link that in the description below so that you can access it too. This is the most complicated part of the video. Hang in there. All works published in the US before 1924 are in the public domain. Okay, works published between 1924 and 1978 are under copyright for 95 years from the date they were published. If that work was created but not published before 1978, the copyright lasts for the life of the artist plus 70 years. Okay? Works published between 1924 and 1963 required a renewal of copyright in order for that copyright to be maintained. And if the owner failed to renew the copyright, the work has fallen into the public domain. Now you can imagine, of course, researching that is a very complicated and time-consuming endeavor. For works published between 1978 and today, and again, this is just law in the US, so if you live outside the US, you're gonna have to find some resources for your own country. But the term of copyright between 1978 and today lasts for the life of the creator plus 70 years. If a person created a piece of artwork in the course of their employment, that term lasts for 95 years from the date of publication or 120 years from the date it was created, whichever comes first. And like I said earlier, today no registration is required of any kind for a copyright to attach. If an artist wants to seek statutory damages in regard to a copyright infringement, some registration might be required. So if you're an artist, it's always great to have a copyright attorney in your back pocket, even if it's just for one hour of their time. So that is very complicated. All right, and I understand how complicated that is, and I can totally see why people just feel the need to wash their hands of it and give up and decide not to worry about it. But like I said, I'm gonna tell you some simple steps here in a second so that you can be an informed shopper. So if this is so complicated, why should we care about it? Why don't we just give up? Well, there's a couple really important reasons. The first, Artists have a right to make a living. None of us would want to go to our jobs and work for free. Artists also have very little recourse when it comes to enforcing their copyrights for overseas manufacturing. And the huge, huge majority of these copyright infringing products are made and produced in China and imported into other countries. There's almost nothing that a creator can do to remove those illegal copies. So the impetus really is on us to be informed consumers and ethical shoppers when it comes to this. And of course, people ask me all the time, why should we expect China to follow our copyright laws? Well, one might argue that it's the right thing to do, at least under our cultural values, but China is also a member of the Berne Convention. The Berne Convention is an international agreement protecting copyright. So in theory, artists' copyright should be respected in China as well as in all the other member countries. Now another question I get all the time is, what about fair use? Can't I review things under fair use and use copyrighted work? Well, Again, I'm not a lawyer, but I did ask my lawyer about this, and here's what I can tell you. Fair use is what's called, in legal terms, 
an affirmative defense. That means it's a possible legal defense to copyright claims, but it's only adjudicated in court. So fair use is not a free pass up front. If you get sued for infringement, fair use is a possible defense you could use. But here's a question. <laughs> Do you wanna get sued so you can find out if your use was fair use? Probably you don't. And according to the attorney I consulted, creating and publicly displaying or reviewing unlicensed diamond paintings almost certainly would not qualify as any kind of fair use. In other words, I wouldn't roll the dice on that one. I should have spiked my coffee this morning because this is taking a lot of thinking. So if this is really that complicated, what the heck is a crafter to do? Because we're just all regular people. How are we supposed to know all this? It's so sad that we have to know all this, isn't it? Because we are used to living in a country where these things are regulated for us. But unfortunately, like I said, China has a huge problem with exporting stolen intellectual property. Now, do I blame everyone who lives and works in China? Of course not. That would be just as wrong. Those people are living under a system they did not create and that they cannot individually change, all right? So I think it's important to view this as something that we can all do as consumers. We get to be the ones to take responsibility for this, whether it's fair or not. Now, what are some practical steps you can take? I used to say reverse image search everything, but honestly, who has the time to do that? And if copyright is as complicated as I just clearly told you it was, I don't think it's realistic for all of us to spend hours and hours interpreting the law or trying to interpret it. Really the problem with this is that there is way more infringing work than there is licensed work out there. So here are some of my basic principles. All right, first, focus on stores you trust and not individual images. Wholesalers and dropshippers from China almost all export masses of unlicensed work. And unless you are shopping on a site that you know licenses their work, it is way better to assume that that work is unlicensed. Blacklisted sites might include all stores on AliExpress. I will tell you, I have searched hundreds of listings on AliExpress I have yet to find a licensed piece of work there. And that includes stock and commercial art because stock and commercial art have licenses for commercial use as well. You can't just take and sell those without any kind of commercial licensing. All stores on AliExpress. If that work was not created before 1924 and it's on AliExpress, it is unlicensed. Let me repeat that. If that piece of art was not created before 1924 and you're unboxing it on your channel, you are displaying and linking to stolen property, period. The exceptions to that rule are so few that they are not even worth discussing. Wholesale sites that ship from China, you know, the drop shippers with a thousand letters in them, I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole. There is infringing work rampant on Amazon. I would never touch a diamond painting from Amazon unless I was 100% sure that the seller licensed all their work. You guys, I could literally list hundreds of these blacklisted sites, hundreds, and tons of them contact YouTubers to do reviews. I do not think receiving a cheap canvas for free in return for your review of an unlicensed image is anywhere close to a good business investment. I can't emphasize it strongly enough. Is your reputation worth a free diamond painting? Is it worth getting sued over a five or $10 free canvas that one of these companies is gonna send to you? I can't speak for you, but to me, there's no way. I've been compiling a list of stores that license work. And of course, some of these sell commercial art. I can't check and make sure that, that every company has the proper licenses for their commercial art. But these are stores that emphasize licensing 
and that list artists for their canvases. So I would love to keep adding to this list. If you know of other sellers, please let me know. I promise if it's a big seller and a popular seller, I've probably looked at it. And if it's not on this list, you can make your own decision about why. I call my second principle the title and artist principle. So if a listing that you're thinking about buying doesn't name the correct title for the piece of artwork and the artist's name, it is stolen. And I have yet to find an exception to this rule, so I'm gonna call it a rule. Of course, if a canvas is stolen, would you want to alert the artist by putting their name in the listing so that they could easily find it when they Google themselves? Of course not. If there's no correct title and no artist name on that listing, I wouldn't buy it. My third principle I call the Disney tip off. So if I'm on a site and I see a whole bunch of Disney images and the site that I'm on is not Diamond Dots who licenses Disney images, I run for the hills because if that company is going to tempt a big multinational corporation like Disney by selling infringing work, there is literally nothing they won't steal from your everyday artist who doesn't have the resources to come after them. Disney licensing is very expensive. So if you're seeing a canvas for $5, $10 that pictures a Disney image on it, there is just no way that you're looking at a licensed canvas. And like I said, if that company is willing to steal from Disney, they're willing to steal from anyone. Number four, assume that all art is under copyright unless you can prove that it isn't. Of course, this 100-year rule applies, so work created before 1924 is in the public domain, but literally everything created after that you should assume is under copyright. It doesn't matter if it's stock art, commercial art, doesn't matter if you've seen it everywhere, doesn't matter if you're only using it for personal use. Like I said earlier, the exception to that rule is something you have to work really hard to find. And I don't think it's practical for the everyday person to spend hours and hours trying to find that exception. So I reserve my reverse image searches now to look for the date a piece of art was created. And of course, if the author is alive, it's a no brainer. That work is under copyright. So like I said, assume all art is under copyright unless you can prove that it isn't. Number five, you can try asking the company, but don't always take their word for it. So I have reached out to a lot of companies to ask about their licensing. And without exception, all of the legitimate companies who license have been very upfront about the fact that they do license and they've gotten back to me right away about it because it's on their radar. They understand it, okay? If I don't hear back from a company and they ghost me, then I can infer for myself what that means, especially if that company violates some of my other principles, like no title and artist are listed on any of their listings, if they sell a ton of Disney for really cheap. If a company is based in China and ships from China, I always assume that they don't license. And like I said, it doesn't mean that I assume that they're bad people. I think that's just as wrong. But I really truly know after talking to even some foreign sellers that some are just not educated enough on this topic to be in business legally, okay? I've encountered foreign sellers and discussed this with them. They just don't understand it. I've also encountered US sellers that really did not realize how complicated this industry is and they didn't understand that having a copyright attorney was really a precursor for doing business. So many are just in over their heads and unfortunately, maybe an equal or greater number just don't care because they're making money hand over fist at the expense of artists. My next principle is that if work is licensed, you should expect to pay more for it because the artist is getting paid. So licensing really means that an artist is lending some of their copyright protections to a company for a particular period of time. They are making money on that license. 
they are making money typically on every canvas that is sold. So it is like me as a consumer purchasing a huge print of their work that then has the additional expense of having an artist render that work into a diamond painting, pay for all the production, pay for all the components, and pay for all the packaging. So of course, that canvas is going to be more expensive. Now here's what I wanna know. What gives us the right to feel entitled to cheap diamond paintings? Why do we feel like we are entitled to inexpensive diamond paintings? Well, I think it's because a precedent has been set by all these unlicensed images. That's the price we compare everything to. But of course, just because this precedent was set by unlicensed work doesn't mean we should believe this is the standard pricing for licensed work. It just isn't. If a work is licensed, you're gonna pay more for it because the artist is getting paid and artists deserve to get paid. My last principle, and I think this is the most important one of all, don't give up. You will make mistakes in this. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It doesn't mean that you should give up your channel. It doesn't mean that you should never post anything again. If you're doing your best to buy licensed and ethically created products, you're gonna make some mistakes, but just stick with it. Keep trying to learn. Keep adding to your arsenal of knowledge because the world needs you. My daughter needs you to be the kind of person who's going to treat artists ethically, who's going to show a good example on their channel. The world needs more of you, people who care about this. So don't give up just because it's hard. And I know it is hard. I'm 100% with you in that. It's unfair that we have to think about it. It's unfair that we have to constantly be on guard for everything we buy. But it's just the way it is, unfortunately. And until that changes, as crafters, it is our responsibility to keep trying to stand up for artists who are trying to make their living. None of us would want to go to work for free. To those of you who've reached out to me and said, I'm not buying stolen canvases anymore. I want you to know how much that means to me. Beyond just revealing your character as a person, that is telling me as the mother of an artist that, hey, I wouldn't buy your kids stolen stuff. And that's way bigger to me. If you're a creator who focuses on this topic on your channel, who's attempting to educate your viewers, who's always trying to show licensed artwork, Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And there are huge YouTubers out there, some really big channels who are always trying to raise awareness about this. If you guys stuck around to the end of this video, I am so impressed with you. <laughs> you are both patient and smart, not to mention you're attractive. I really hope that you found today's video really informative. As always, I'm happy to answer what questions I can in the comments below. Once again, I'm not a copyright attorney, so I can't give you legal advice and I can't advise you on your particular situation, but I'm always happy to answer questions that I understand and have answers to in the comments below. Thanks so much for everything you are doing to make the crafting industry better and to make this a more just and fair world for artists. I really appreciate you. Artists really appreciate you. It's been so great having you today. Of course, spread some joy wherever you are, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.